April, the fourth month of the year in our Gregorian calendar, heralds spring in earnest, and of course April showers, and perhaps other unsettled weather. For our poets, including Wilfred Owen, Van Dyke, Shelley and Longfellow, the month provides a rich source for them to muse upon. Among our readers are Richard Mitchley and Gisela Rowe. It was an April morning fresh and clear by William Wordsworth. It was an April morning Fresh and clear, the rivulet, delighting in its strength, ran with a young man's speed, and yet the voice of waters which the winter had supplied was softened down into a vernal tone. The spirit of enjoyment and desire, and hopes and wishes from all living things went circling like a multitude of sounds. The budding groves seemed eager to urge on the steps of June, as if their various hues were only hindrances that stood between them and their object but meanwhile prevailed such an entire contentment in the air that every naked ash and tardy tree yet leafless showed as if the countenance with which it looked on this delightful day were native to the summer up the brook i roamed in the confusion of my heart alive to all things and forgetting all at length i to a sudden turning came in this continuous glen where down a rock the stream so ardent in its course before sent forth such sallies of glad sound that all which i till then had heard appeared the voice of common pleasure beast and bird the lamb the shepherd's dog the linnet and the thrush vied with this waterfall and made a song which while i listened seemed like the wild growth or like some natural produce of the air that could not cease to be green leaves were here but twas the foliage of the rocks the birch the yew the holly and the bright green thorn with hanging islands of resplendent firs and on a summit distant a short space by any who should look beyond the dell a single mountain cottage might be seen i gazed and gazed and to myself i said our thoughts at least are ours, and this wild nook, my Emma, I will dedicate to thee. Soon did the spot become my other home, my dwelling and my out-of-doors abode. And of the shepherds who have seen me there, to whom I sometimes in our idle talk have told this fancy, two or three perhaps, years after we are gone and in our graves, when they have cause to speak of this wild place, may call it by the name of Emma's Dell. April by Sarah Teasdale The roofs are shining from the rain, the sparrows titter as they fly, and with a windy April grace the little clouds go by. Yet the backyards are bare and brown, with only one unchanging tree. I could not be so sure of spring, save that it sings in me. An April Love by Alfred Austin Nay, be not June, nor yet December, dear, but April always, as I find thee now. A constant freshness unto me be thou, and not the ripeness that must soon be sere. Why should I be time's dupe, and wish more near the sobering harvest of thy vernal vow? I am content so still across thy brow, returning smile chase transitory tear. Then scatter thy April heart in sunny showers. I crave not summer drought nor winter sleet. As spring be fickle, so thou be as sweet. With half-kept promise tantalise the hours, and let love's frolic hands and woodland feet fill high the lap of life with wilding flowers. A Petition to April, written during sickness, by Susanna Blameyer. Sweet April, month of all the year that loves to shed the dewy tear, and with a soft but chilly hand the silken leaves of flowers expand. The tear-set eye shall I ne'er see weep o'er a sickly plant like me. Thou art the nurse of infant flowers, the parent of relenting showers. Thy tears and smiles when newly born hang on the cheek of weeping morn while evening sighs in seeming grief, or frost nipped bud or bursting leaf. Once pity held thee in her arms, and breathing all her gentle charms, bade thy meek smile or take the tear, and hope breaks loose from trembling fear. 
Bathe clouds that load the breast of day, On melting twilight weep away. She bade thee, when the breezy morn Kiss the sweet gem that decked the thorn, Or the pale primrose softly pour The nectar of a balmy shower. And is the primrose dear to thee, And wilt thou not give health to me? See how I droop, my strength decays, And life wears out a thousand ways. Supporting friends their cordials give, And wish and hope and bid me live. With this short breath it may not be, Unless thou lend'st a sigh to me. O oh, fan me with a gentler breeze, Invite me forth with busy bees, And bid me trip the dewy lawn, Adorned with wild flowers newly blown. O oh, do not sternly bid me try The influence of a milder sky, I know that May can weave her bower and spot and paint a richer flower. Nor is her cheek so wan as thine, nor is her hand so cold as mine. Nor bears she thy unconstant mind, but ah, to me she ne'er was kind. To thee I'll rear a mossy throne and bring the violet yet unblown. Then teach it just to ope its eye and on thy bosom fondly die. Embalm it in thy tears, and see if thou hast one more left for me. If thy pale noon no roses blow, nor lilies spread their summer snow, nor would I wish this time worn cheek in all the blush of health to break. No, give me ease and cheerful hours, and take away thy fairer flowers. So may the rude gales cease to blow, and every breeze yet milder grow till I in slumber softly sleep, or wake but to grow calm and weep, and all thy flowers in pity bend, like the soft sorrows of a friend. Over the Land is April by Robert Louis Stevenson Over the land is April, over my heart a rose, over the high brown mountain the sound of singing goes. Say, love, do you hear me, hear my sonnets ring, over the high brown mountain, love, do you hear me sing? By highway, love, and byway, the snows succeed the rose. Over the high brown mountain, the wind of winter blows. Say, love, do you hear me? Hear my sonnets ring. Over the high brown mountain, I sound the song of spring. I throw the flowers of spring. Do you hear the song of spring? Hear you the songs of spring? <laughs> 